new episode of Scott Talks Long and welcome once again to another episode of Scott Talks Long. So in this episode, uh, we're going to talk about the Nuremberg Principles. So the Nuremberg Principles are principles of international criminal law and they were uh, recognized by the international tribunals. So the judgments of these tribunals were adopted in 1950 by the International Law Commission. So the International Law Commission submitted a report to the United Nations General Assembly. And the report contained these principles in volume two. And they are specifically contained in um, paragraph 67 of that report. So there are seven principles. And the principle number one is the principle that says that any person who commits an act that constitutes your crime under international law is liable for punishment is responsible for the act and therefore liable for punishment. Any person who commits an act that is constitutes your crime under international law is responsible for the act and therefore liable for punishment. So the principle number two is the principle that states that um, the fact that International law does not impose a penalty for acts committed, for crimes committed within national law, does not mean that persons who commit crimes under national law are not responsible under international law. That's when we find that there is the International Court of Justice that prosecutes persons who commit crimes within the national law. Even if it's the president of a particular country, you can, you can, there's that case of President Uhuru Kenyatta, President Ruto, who is the current president of the Republic of Kenya, who are subjected uh, to the International Criminal Court, but they were not prosecuted because there was no sufficient evidence. So if you commit a crime within your na nation, it does not mean that you will not be liable or cannot be subjected within the international, international law. So the principle number three, is a principle that states that a person who committed a crime, a state official or government official who commits a crime is liable within international law. does not matter if you are a state official or a government official, you still be liable under international law. So the first principle, that's why you find presidents are being uh, subjected under international trial. So the principle number four is the principle that says that any person who commits a crime, if he acted as a, under a superior command or a government authority, he will be liable under international law. So we have that principle of superior command. So if you are, if you acted under superior command and you ended up committing a crime, you will still be liable under international law. So the principle number five is the principle that demands fair trial for or facts and law for person who commits a crime under international law, that there must be fair trial, and this fair trial must be of facts and law. There must just be that uh, fair trial. So the principle number six is the principle that describes the crimes, um, these are crimes for uh, war crimes, crimes against peace, and uh, crimes against humanity. So persons who commit those crimes are liable in the international uh, international law. And the seventh and last principle is the principle that says that um, complicity in commission of those crimes, complicity in commission of war crimes, complicity in the commission of crimes against humanity, complicity in the commission of uh, crimes against peace, uh, constitutes a crime and the persons who commit those crimes are liable under international criminal law. So those are the seven Nuremberg uh, principles that were adopted uh, by the international tribunals and they were they were adopted by the international law commission and they were recognized by the international tribunals so keep on just stay in touch subscribe to the legal channel we are going to learn and we are going to learn more we are going to learn about genocide about these crimes and subscribe